Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. This is Karen Margulis and I'm a pastel artist who loves to share and I love to experiment with new materials. And I got my hands on some new material this week and I want to experiment and kind of show you in real time. I have never used this before so you're going to join with me as I uh, experiment with this new material. And I want to solve the problem that we all have and that is Pastel paper, sanded paper is expensive. What is an alternative? How can we make our own surfaces? And I like to play around with different things. Clear gesso is one of my favorites. But I had a patron over on my Patreon page a few weeks ago talk about a product that she uses to make her own surface. And I thought, hmm, I never heard of it. I'm going to give it a try. And here it is. It's Micaceous Iron Oxide by Golden. And it's really an interesting material because of the mica flakes. It has a little bit of grittiness, which you need for pastel, and it has a little bit of sparkle, which is really cool. And I'm not sure that the camera is going to pick up on the sparkle of the surface, but um, maybe when we take it outside, you'll be able to see. So what I did to prepare the surface is I used a piece of multimedia artboard, which is a nice rigid surface. I applied the medium right out of the jar with a brush, and I made random brush strokes because I wanted to have a little bit of texture. Now, the directions on the, on the jar says you can use it, it with a medium or water if you want it thinner. I used it right out of the jar, and I really used very little. It dried in about 15 minutes, so it was really good. Now, do you have to use this multimedia artboard? No, of course not. You can use any surface that could get wet. So watercolor paper, printmaking paper, mat board, you, you name it, find a archival acid-free surface to apply this uh, micaceous iron oxide. And I want to, let's give it the scratch test. I'm going to take my fingernails. This might bother you <laughs> if it does, but it shows you that it's sandy. It created a sandy surface. So I'm really, really excited about that. Well, let's see how it performs. Oh, also, it's a nice, really dark uh, gray color, which should make the colors pop. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to be painting for today's demo one of my favorite subjects, which is Queen Anne's Lace. I selected this because when we are experimenting with something new that we've never used before, I like to uh, practice with something a subject that I'm familiar with. In other words, an, an old friend. So that I don't have to worry about composition and that kind of thing, I can concentrate on playing with the actual materials themselves. So my tip for you if you're experimenting, use a subject or choose a subject that you are comfortable and familiar with. Alright, so what I've done is using a hard pastel, just drew in some of the main flower shapes. I'm going to take this reference photo and arrange my flowers to make a more pleasing design. I want your eye to flow through and up into the sky. I don't draw them in detail because I don't want to color them in. I don't want a botanical drawing. I want a painterly, free, expressive type of flower. So I'm just drawing in the shapes. I'm using a hard pastel and I'm going to use hard pastels to do the next step, which is to do the uh, initial block in. So I'm going to block in, using a dark blue, a dark kind of background shape, sneaking, snaking up through behind the flowers, up to where the horizon is, which the horizon is about um, a little ways down from the top, a high horizon. Now, I normally like to call this part of the painting laying in the dirt, but I had a great comment from a viewer who said, you know, dirt and soil are not the same thing. I didn't know that. Soil is what plants need to grow. Dirt is what gets under your fingernails. That's what he said. So he said I should use the term soil rather than dirt, but I'm not sure that has the same impact. So I'm really curious as to what you guys think. Should I call it putting in the dirt or should I call it putting the soil? And you can comment below because I'd love to hear what you think. So I put in a mixture of a dark red and the dark blue to create this dark shape that's going to be behind the flowers allowing them to have something to anchor into for the roots to hold on to. I just want to say something too about this process. 
stick with me to the end of the video because this painting is definitely going to go through the ugly, I call it the teenager stage. And when you, hopefully you're going to look at it and say, what on earth is she doing? Stick with me to the end and hopefully I will be able to pull it off and make it into something interesting and beautiful. What I'm doing now is I'm putting in more color that's going to go underneath the green and I'm using warm colors, so a mixture of oranges. This is going to allow the greens to be a little more interesting and give it some more depth. I need to block in the sky, so I'm going to use a hard pastel and a blue. This is a nice warm blue. I think it'll be a good base for my sky. I need to block in the flower shapes. They're going to be light, but they're also going to um, need to have... Um, I wanted a paler version. Let's just do some yellow. This will just be the start to the flowers. And again, these flowers are going to be arranged and rearranged. I want to have a variety of shapes and sizes. Some are going to be on top, some are going to be underneath. So this is the underpainting stage. I'm going to do one thing and I'm going to take a piece of pipe insulation foam and blend all this into the surface. Now I want to comment on my experience so far with this micaceous iron oxide as a uh, support for my pa painting. It is definitely have a, uh, has a pretty rough texture which is good if you like to do a lot of layers. So, so far so good. All right, now I have the underpainting in place. Next, I'm going to start layering with my soft pastels. I'm using this set of Terry Ludwig pastels. This is the floral landscape set. It's a set that I selected these colors for Terry Ludwig pastels. Um, and so I'm going to use this exclusively. I'll probably use some hard pastels at the end for some details. So, I'm going to go back in and reinforce the dark areas. It's funny, I just put on my glasses so I could see a little bit better, and now I can see the little shiny bits of mica. I'll try to take a picture and post it at the end of the video so maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I'm not sure. I'm adding another layer to the dark dirt or soil. Not sure what it's going to be anymore. And let's add, let's just stick with two layers. Now this is green, right? Because it's gray, it's, it's uh, grass. So I'm going to add a layer of a dark, cooler green. And then I also have a dark, warm green that I'm going to just mix, just to give a little variety. And there is my darks. The next step to the painting is to finish the sky. I like to establish the sky early on in a painting because I feel it really sets the tone and the mood. So I'm going to use a variety of blue pastels. I liked that warm turquoise pastel that I put down in the underpainting. So I'll, I have one that's similar in, a, in the softer pastel, so I'm going to put that down. And as the... Hmm, sky reaches the horizon or where it meets the grasses, it warms up a little bit, so I'm putting in a pale yellow. Now, you can really see, if you look closely, the texture of that iron, iron oxide ground. Uh, and so I want a smoother, calmer sky. So I'm going to take my finger and very lightly blend these together. Now, I don't normally blend with my fingers, and there's lots of reasons why. I have a video on that. Um, but one of the reasons is it makes things look dull. It crushes the crystals in the pastel. So I'm going to blend it in to get rid of some of the texture, but I'm going to go back over it with some fresh pastel marks. And that restores some of the luminosity of pastel. Alright, so I've got the sky in place. Now what I'm going to do is work some more on the greens. I want to reinforce the uh, colors that are going to be under the grass. So I'm going to reintroduce some of the warm colors, these peachy colors, a reddish color I'm going to add down in here. What else do I have? I'm going to add some violet. 
one thing that I know from experience is that when you have some violet and some warm colors such as the reds mixed in with your greens, it makes them come alive. It makes them feel more filled with light. So I'm mixing in some oranges and some violets. And then I think that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and start on the grasses. Now I look at my photo and I see that the, the wind is blowing to the left, but yet my marks seem to be going to the right. So I'm going to actually take out my artistic license out of my pocket and I'm going to make my green grasses blow over to the right. And what I'm, what I'm seeing, which is really cool, and I'm pulling it up, pulling them up into the sky, I can see the brush marks that were in my underpainting. So it's kind of giving a feeling of texture to the grasses and I haven't done a thing. So that's always fun. I'm covering up some of the um, flowers at this point, but I'll reintroduce them. That's not going to be too much of a problem. And I'm just taking the greens that I have in my box in this particular set and I'm just gradually working them in so I get a variety of green using the lighter, duller, cooler colors for the distance and then gradually getting warmer, a little more intense as I come forward in the painting. So here's a nice warm yellow green that I can put in the foreground. Now before I go any further I have to reestablish these flowers because I've completely lost them. So I'm going to take a, a cool, dull blue-gray and block in the flowers once again. Now these flowers, in real life, they are white or very, very light. Um, so I'm going to start them with a duller color and then I'll and make sure I have a variety of shapes and sizes. I'll have some go off the page. And I think I'm going to put a few that are like in the distance because this dull gray is perfect to represent distant things. So now you can see these little marks makes it feel like there's miles, well maybe not miles, but lots more of these Queen Anne's Lace it go, growing in the distance. I'm adding a, a touch more of a a little bit darker blue-gray. Now some of these I'm going to keep blue-gray because they'll be hidden in the grass. Alright, so let's keep moving on. I'm going to do a little bit more with the flowers themselves. Um, the Queen Anne's Lace, as I said, they are very, very light, almost white, but there's green in them too. So what I like to do first is establish the green that I see and then I will gradually turn on the lights or get them lighter and brighter. So I'm using a several greens. In fact, I'm going to take my darkest green and put some of that at the base of some of these flowers. I'm starting to pull them out from the background. So one thing that is important to my method is that I start with big simple shapes and then gradually carve down till they get smaller and more detailed. So you might be all right, I'm going to, I'm now I'm turning on the lights, but I don't want to finish them exactly right yet. So I'm adding a pale peach to some of them, some of, parts of some of them I want to be hidden in the grass. So you would see just the shadows of them. So I'm just being selective as to where I put this pale peach. Let's hide another little guy right in here. Eh, maybe not. Do, don't be afraid to experiment and move around, put some in, take some out. You're not, you know, very rarely do I get the flowers arranged the way I like them right off the bat. So um, don't be afraid. You can brush them out. You can take them out, put them in. I'm adding a nice periwinkle blue to them just because it's pretty. I like it. And I'll add a few dots of it, like maybe there's some purple flowers hidden in the grasses. There's definitely a few uh, that have a much deeper shade of peach or pink to them, so I'm going to put in a little bit of a darker in there. 
And I don't know if the camera picks up on this, but if you look closely, you can see the brush strokes of the original ground that I applied, that micaceous iron oxide. It definitely has a lot of grit to it, a surprising amount of grit to it. All right, so I'm really excited about this so far. I want to thank my, my friend over on Patreon who suggested this. This is a lot of fun. All right. I think I've got enough going on with the flowers that I can start to put in some bigger chunks of grass. So what I'm going to do is take some Blair, this is called Very Low Odor, Spray Fixable, Workable Fixable, fi Workable Fixative, Tongue Twister. And I'm going to spray it in the area and you can see what's happening is it darkens and dulls the color. Which is why I don't like to use a final fixative, especially one like this. Um, but in this case, I want to darken this area so that the flowers st will start to pop a little bit more and that I can create a feeling of depth within these grasses. It takes very little time to dry. And when I go back over that dark area with the softer pastel, you can see how that dark area now allows me to get kind of a really interesting suggestion of texture. I'm adding back in some of that bright yellow green. Why not add some of that yellow green to the some of the flowers? Also, you know what I like about the Queen Anne's Lace, how sometimes they have those unopened seed pods? It'd be cool if we put some of those in. So I'm putting those in with what I call a shouting mark. I'm pressing very hard. Up until this point, I'd been using a whisper mark where I just very lightly apply the pastel. When I know I'm not going to change or add to it, I will shout. That means I press really hard and I don't really see the layers of color that's underneath. All right. I've got enough now with big simple shapes. I think I need to add a little guy right over here just for balance and then cover him back up. So I'll put him in sort of take them out so that he gets hidden. All right. Big simple shapes. Now it's time to get down into smaller detail. And I think it's time to brighten up or lighten up those Queen Anne's lace. So I'm going to take a very, very pale, a pale yellowy peach color. And I'm going to very lightly apply it to some of these Queen Anne's lace. Remember, I don't want them to look like they're stuck on top of the grass. So I'm going to put some in and then I'm going to bury them. This surface is really interesting. It's pretty textured, more than I expected, which is which is fun. I love to experiment and try new things. I'm going to add a little bit more clarity and detail to some of these flowers. So I'm pressing harder. I'm shouting with the pastel. This is a pale yellow, not pure white. It's yellow with a little bit of color to it. And I think at this point, I'm ready to start adding more detail. Now, I could use these hard pastel or soft pastels, the Terry Ludwig pastels, to create the grass marks. But sometimes I just like to use a harder pastel and I can get a little bit more uh, finesse with my detail. So this is a dark green. I'm going to add some stems. And I always say be careful of the stems. Don't be afraid to add them because they have to be there. But don't be afraid and just use a nice broken line. So I'm going to just go in here with a few broken lines. Remember I'm having the wind blow over to the right. So I'm going to create some stems. I'll pull some up into the air so I can create some depth. So there's my stems. I need to add some light on the stems. So let's say the light is, we didn't really determine the light. <clears throat> let's put the light over here on the left, which means the light will hit the stems on the left hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and give some of those stems a feeling of sunlight hitting them. I always like to have a rogue piece of grass kind of coming the opposite way. Maybe it got tangled up, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and start making some grass marks. And I'm just making broken lines. You have to just relax 
your body because if you're too tense your lines will be too stiff and just let your marks dance across the page. So I have a variety of greens and I'm going to reintroduce some of those warmer colors that were in the underpinning. So here's a nice yellow ochre. I had a lot of peach in the underpainting, so let's pull out the peach that was in the underpainting and put a few more marks just to kind of represent some of the dried grasses that you might find. Pull some more grass marks up over the sky just to give us that point of view that we're looking at. Now the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put these thin hard pastels away. I'm going to reintroduce some Terry Ludwig pastels and make some chunkier marks just to represent some of the wider blades of grasses and maybe some of the leaves that are mixed in. So I'm having what I would consider a variety of big chunky marks and thin dancing marks. It's a good way to put it. Again, I can't stress enough how interesting this texture is and also the really unique quality to the, sh the shimmer, which I'm not sure you can see. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more bits of purple, because I remember in this field there was all kinds of wildflowers. And then finally, how about a few yellow guys, just to add variety and interest. And notice where I'm placing the flowers, I want your eye to pick up on them. I call these spice marks because they're, they're different. They're areas of contrast. They're thicker, brighter, more intense mark. And it contrasts with the rest of the painting. So I'm putting these areas of contrast in at the very end of the painting. The final thing I'm going to do is add a couple more little marks of light on the flower, a few of the flowers. And I really think that at this point we need to have a little bit of life. I'm going to hold on. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of dark. This is um, going to be a little bumblebee. And he needs a wings so he can fly. And there we have it. So I'm really excited about this. this is the finished painting. I, I think maybe a couple more marks I would be done. But I'm really excited about this micaceous iron oxide. So I'm going to do some more with it and I hope you have fun trying it out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leaving me a comment, subscribe to my channel. There's lots more where this one came from. And let's paint.